Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us once again. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Meredith Schultz. She's joining us to talk about uh, FDA approval of the first gene therapy for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, in pediatric patients. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Meredith Schultz. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Thank you, Neil, for having me. Well, a bit of background. Um, you're with Avexis, I do believe. Give, give us a bit of background and uh, talk briefly about your role there at Avexis. Sure. So my role at Avexis, I'm on the translational medicine team, which means that uh, I'm really there to bridge the gap between uh, the basic science researchers and the mm-hmm. uh, clinical development team, which, which runs the clinical trials at Avexis. I, I'm a physician. My, my background is uh, that I'm a pediatric neurologist, and um, I came from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where I had the opportunity uh, actually to treat six patients with um, with gene therapy uh, there at UW, and um, the therapy was um, was truthfully uh, life changing for the patients and um, career career altering for me. And um, it was after I. I had experience with the therapy that um, I ended up um, joining the, the company. We're going to talk about this FDA approval of the first gene therapy for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, in pediatric patients. Uh, so explain to us what SMA is. Sure. So SMA stands for spinal muscular atrophy, and um, it is a rare genetic disorder that uh, results in a progressive loss of motor neurons. And the motor neurons, um, you know, are the the cells in your spinal cord that connect to to your muscles. And so the loss of these motor neurons uh, results in progressive weakness. And um, and ultimately, if it's left untreated, it um, it can result in permanent ventilation, um, the need for permanent ventilation or death in its most severe form. So these these children are missing um, a key protein that. Um, is needed to keep those motor neurons healthy and um, it uh, it's um, uh, it's a genetic disorder that um, affects about one in one in ten thousand live births uh, worldwide and about one in fifty four people are actually carriers of uh, this genetic defect now is this something that is always diagnosed in childhood or is it something as you say can can be left untreated and then be diagnosed later in life so there are a couple of different forms of spinal muscular atrophy in the most common form uh, which is the most severe form it is uh, diagnosed in childhood so these infants present with weakness uh, at less than six months of age Um, But there are some less severe forms of spinal muscular atrophy that do present in older children and even in adults. Traditionally, what was the uh, the treatment for SMA? So prior to, you know, to five years ago, we really had no treatments for spinal muscular atrophy. So um, it was it was pretty devastating for parents to receive a diagnosis. Uh, We could provide supportive care for these infants. So we could give them help with ventilation and help with feeding via a feeding tube. Um, but we really had no way to stop the weakness or to make them stronger. So, you know, now that we have, have you know, new therapies for spinal muscular atrophy has really given a lot of hope to these parents. Now, the FDA has, has approved a treatment, Zolgensma. That's right. Could you talk about this treatment and how it works and um, talk about how, how it's unique among treatments? Sure. So Zolgensma is a one-time uh, intravenous therapy that is um, approved for children less than two years of age, and it uh, replaces the missing or mutated gene in in these children. So it is addressing the genetic root cause of the disease, and it's given um, it's given over a, a one-hour uh, intravenous infusion. And this is a one-time thing. This infusion, you say, it replaces this missing this missing enzyme. Uh, it's a yep. It replaces the missing gene. So uh, it um, is the the gene is actually uh, delivered via uh, an adeno associated or AAV virus. Um, it's uh, AAV nine serotype nine, and uh, this virus uh, is able to cross the the blood brain barrier to deliver a functional copy of the human SMN gene to the patient's neurons um, without modifying um, their existing DNA. 
Was this therapy previously approved for infants that were more than two years of age? Is this something that is, was going on prior and is just now uh, being approved for a, a lower age? Uh, the, the therapy um, is a, was the, the first approval was for children less than two. There are additional studies that um, we are, are doing right now to um, try to get the therapy approved for older individuals and even adults. But this is the first approval was for children less than two. And, and why is it so very important that early intervention uh, take place? Yes, early, early intervention is, is really key. And the reason for that is because the motor neurons, once they die, we can't bring the motor neurons back. And so we, we know that children who get this therapy earlier do better. And uh, the, the condition, spinal muscular atrophy, has, um, has been recommended by, um, by the RUST committee, the, recommend, the recommended uniform um, screening panel, which is the, the newborn screening panel um, that um, uh, you know, makes, makes recommendations for diseases to be added to the newborn screen. And so this is one of the conditions that um, is, is making its way, you know, thankfully, onto many of the state's uh, newborn screens so that we can screen for it at birth and um, treat uh, as early as possible. You mentioned how many live births are uh, going to be affected uh, by, by SMA earlier in our conversation. Could you, once again, for our listeners, how many SMA uh, children are going to be, be diagnosed? That's right. So, there, so SMA affects one in 10,000 live births worldwide. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and one in 54 people will carry the genetic defect. And so what happens um, most commonly is that you have two parents uh, that are both carriers. Uh, they, they're not aware that they are carriers. They don't have, you don't have any symptoms when you're carriers. And um, when, um, when those parents have a child, um, with, with each pregnancy, there's a one in four chance that they'll have a child that's affected with SMA. Where can we go online and get some more information about SMA and about uh, Zolgensma as well? So um, so the, uh, um, there's a, a couple of resources. So um, Cure, Cure SMA, CureSMA.org um, has a lot, of, um, a lot of very good information about spinal muscular atrophy. And if you'd like to learn more about, no, about Zolgensma, um, you can go to um, avexis.com and um, read some more about the therapy there. Dr. Schultz, thank you for joining us on the program this morning. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. The audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.